I had a chance to fix the, the bug that was causing the little error on the bottom of the page whenever we successfully injected the shell. So just note if you go back and try this after downloading tonight's version um, that you won't get the little error. Just go look in your file system or just set page equals to the file name you gave and try to see if your file is there. So like in other words, just change the page parameter to whatever you call the, your, your file. Okay, there we go. If you get it working with the example that's in the system, then try to replace the actual shellcode with one of the PHP shellcodes from the Laudanum project. Let's see if you, you can get those to work. All right, in our um, list here, we're, the next topic is authentication bypass. And we're gonna do a couple different techniques to bypass authentication. One of them's gonna be the SQL injection, so we're gonna rely on what we learned earlier. And then we're also gonna look at cookie tampering. So we'll follow the same pattern. We would fuzz the fields with a whole lot of different symbols and characters and values trying to see if there's anything of note on the login screen. And we'll use some of those special SQL characters to see if there's anything that might trigger an SQL problem. And we can see that this is a post. The parameters are being submitted via, via post. If we look at the params, you can take a look at all the parameters that you have to choose from to fuzz. And there's a couple of different ones that will work. But right now, we're just trying to cause an error message. We're still taking a look at the page to see what we can figure out. And we got back an error message. And this is a really good error message. Probably never seen an error message <coughs> this friendly in any real life application. This one's pretty absurd. Uh, a couple of versions ago, it was actually modified to include even more information. And uh, this information down here about the actual version and things to help people out. Here's our query. So the application is supplying the query up to that point, and then we provided the canary and the, the chicken scratch stuff there, and then the application is providing the and password is equal to, in this case, empty string, because we didn't pass the password in, so it's just blank. And our goal is to, at first, just bypass authentication at all, but then we want to be able to log in as a particular user. So to bypass authentication just whatsoever, what would be a good try the way this particular site does this authentication? What's that? Comment out the password. That would, that would work. So what, in, that, in that case, what would we have to know, though? We would need to know one piece of information. You need a username. And that would actually allow us to target a particular user, right? So actually, that's skipping ahead to the second part. So that would work. OK, how would we get usernames? Because we're going to need to know what the usernames are in that case. Dump the tables. Dump the tables. That would definitely work. So you could use what kind of a SQL injection query to dump tables? 
where it equals true, the binary <coughs> true thing. Like that on what's the yep. in the lab. So you're talking about on the user info page? Yeah, that would work. What if the table wasn't the table that the application is selecting? So we got lucky on the user info page because it happens to be hitting the user table. But what if it was hitting uh, the canned goods table? So you went down to dump the schema. You could dump the schema. But eventually we're going to have to use an SQL statement that can add an, a second table onto the table that's already being selected by the application, right? So if the application is, say, select all from airplanes, and we want the accounts table, we're going to have to use what kind of query? Union? A union query. We're going to have to union the accounts table onto the bottom of the airplanes table. Make sure all the columns line up, data types are the same. So definitely that would work. So in this case, just to bypass authentication at all, we probably need to, need to at least get this much of the query working right here. Let's see if I can magnify that. So if we can get the select all from accounts, if we can get just that much of the query to work, we're probably going to get all the results back and then we'll get logged in as more than likely which, which user do you think, and this is an opinion, there's not necessarily a right answer, but it's probably two answers are probably the best. Probably, it's probably the root user, but why? It's not because they're root. Yeah, it's the first account that the developers typically add, right? And then the other account that is likely to get logged in as if you select an entire list of a whole bunch of users is which, which one uh, in the table, which user in the table? The first one or the last one? Yeah, first user or the last user. So let's just see if we can get our SQL to work at least enough to get that much of the statement to work. So it's going to say select all from accounts where username is equal to, we have a single tick, so we need to close that out and then we need to comment out the rest of the query. But if we just say where username is equal to blank and then we just comment out the rest of the query without putting anything else in there, we're probably going to get back zero results and we're not going to get logged in. Yeah. So we have to make sure that the statement is effectively running select all from accounts and to do that we can create a tautology, an always true statement, which saying where always true is the exact same thing as not having a where clause at all. So we can get the same effect of saying select all from accounts and still have a where clause. So we're going to do a single quote to close out to close out that single quote, and then let's uh, mix it up a little bit. We'll say or a is equal to a. Okay, and then we need to have a comment to get rid of the password part, and we're going to add a space because it's a MySQL server. If you don't want to have to type all that A equals A stuff with all the quotes, just do 2 equals 2 or whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. And we are logged in. And it user authenticated. And it is as the first user, which is admin. But a lot of times, the first user is just going to be a person. It's probably going to be the developer, and they may not necessarily have admin rights. So if you want to target a particular user, and they're not the first user, there's a few different ways to do it. And we already heard one idea was to keep the username portion of the query and then just get rid of the password portion of the query. So let's log back out and go back to the login page. I think I've damaged this Windows box because it is really slow now. And it's the VM, so 
All right, so then we'll go, <clears throat> let's just cause an error again, just so we can get that friendly error message back. And if you, if you notice one thing about this page is it's not, um, it's not really blind SQL injection, but it doesn't actually reflect back the result sets either, if that makes sense. So it is a little harder than the, uh, the user information page because the login page doesn't display the results. So in order to be able to figure out what the, to dump like the, the table scheme is or something, you're not gonna be able to just output them onto the screen. You're gonna have to use um, timing or some, something else to extract those schemas out. If, to do that, you're probably gonna wanna use SQL map because it can go through that tedious process a whole lot faster than trying to do it by hand. Okay, so let's try to target a particular user. So why don't we just copy the query out and we'll just um, get our prefixes and suffixes <coughs> correct in Notepad. This is one injection point, and this is the other, so we'll go ahead and put in some placeholders. <coughs> so our prefix is a single tick, but in this case, we don't want to use that prefix necessarily. We want to go ahead and fill in the blanks. So let's say we're going to try to log in as user Jeremy. And I'm gonna artificially just put some space here to represent the fact that this is where our injection starts so we can kind of keep track of where the system leaves off and where we start. This one is, is being supplied by the system, it's, it's not extra. So we'll have to deal with that. And so we'll comment out and make sure there's a space. If that makes sense. So let's try this part here, but that's not going, that, and that should work, I believe. Let's see if we've got it correct. If it doesn't work, we'll try something else. <coughs> because we had a syntactically correct query. If we take off the comment part, just delete it, and then put this all back together, this is what the query looked like. Select all from accounts where the username is Jeremy. There is a, a user Jeremy in there, and so the database ran, it, ran those, that correct syntax, effectively running this statement right here, and returned that row from the table, resulting in that user being logged in. So we bypassed authentication using uh, SQL injection in this case, and there's another way to do it, is to do it using the, uh, to manipulate the cookies. So, Carl, are we uh, at a good stopping point? A good stopping yes, point. Yes, I think we are. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna stop here and break for lunch. And uh, thanks to the ISSA for buying lunch today. And I believe they, um, bought enough for everybody to have two pieces. And we had uh, a lot more people show up than we, than we thought, which is great. But uh, that's about how the math works out. So, And while we're doing uh, lunch in a few minutes, do you want to talk about ISSA or? OK. So why don't we go ahead and break now. And then when everybody sits back down again, I'll tell you a little bit about the ISSA chapter here in a little while.